We'll continue with those questions I left in the mid latitude cyclone checklist. So if you had any problems, I am here to answer some of those questions. So do not forget to subscribe on the channel. Do not forget to share with your friends, classmates. Do not forget to comment and like the video. So the first question was um, the other three names of a mid latitude cyclone, and that is the frontal depression the temporal depression and the extratropical cyclone and then uh, the next question would be in which season do midlatitude cyclones affect South Africa so I have a few diagrams here uh, the answer would be winter so these diagrams let me just share this story with you so that you understand what is happening so this is the diagram for summer and uh, this is South Africa city would be Cape Town and so in summer we have the South Atlantic anticyclone right here the Kalahari anticyclone up there and then the South Indian anticyclone down here so air from the South Atlantic anticyclone rotates outwards anti-clockwise so here A at A the mid latitude cyclone approaches South Africa but then due to this anti-clockwise A the mid latitude cyclone is pushed further down away from South Africa so in summer the mid latitude cyclone doesn't affect South Africa but then in winter on the other hand we know that Cape Town receives rainfall in winter so this is the story right here this is what happens so in winter this south atlantic anticyclone migrates northwards it comes up here it's no longer down here right so its migration leaves space for the mid latitude cyclone to pass through to come towards south africa hence there is winter rainfall in cape town and then so i think so in the examination your answer would be winter because the south atlantic anticyclone that acts as the blocking high migrates northwards thereby leaving space for the mid latitude cyclone to pass through therefore affecting south africa and then the other question on the checklist was in which direction does mid-latitude cyclone move in and why? So here the direction would be they move from west to east or eastwards because they are driven by westerlies. And then here these are never ever smoke weed is here to make life easier for us because some people get confused as soon as uh, we have tropical cyclones involved people get confused on which one goes in this direction and which one goes in that direction so never ever smoke weed as you can see the mid latitude cyclone approaches Cape Town it comes from the west to the east from the west to the east do not forget that and then uh, how to identify the developmental stages of a mid latitude cyclone so here are diagrams we see the first the polar front uh, there is no other that has the polar front in the middle the warm east is the polar east is no the warm west is the polar east is and then the polar front right and then the next one is the wave stage just the wave stage because of this wave which makes it pretty obvious and then the third one would be the mature stage right and then the occlusion stage so this one is v-shaped this one is y-shaped okay so now we know that this is the polar front stage the wave stage the mature stage and the occlusion stage and then on the checklist we have you are supposed to know the differences between these two so the first difference that you have there is that this one is v-shaped and this one is y-shaped and then the second difference that you have there is that this one the cold front is well developed and the warm front is also well developed and then on the other hand here the cold front and the warm front have merged together that is 
another difference. And then we have how to draw a cross section and a synoptic diagram. So the synoptic diagram is this one, the one that we usually see where you have a cold front that have that has the spikes and all that and then the V-shaped on the mature stage and then the cross section is the one that usually comes because we don't usually see it in the question papers. So if you are asked to draw the cross section of a cold front, this is what you draw right here. As you can see now, there are no spikes on the cross section. You are now putting your cumulonimbus clouds. Sometimes you are told how to label it. Sometimes you just put everything. So here I just put everything. So this is your cold front labeled right here. You have this huge cloud, the cumulonimbus cloud and heavy rainfall. Okay, cumulonimbus clouds which yields heavy rainfall, which is labeled cumulonimbus clouds. And then we have this arrow right here, which is cold air. Cold air is dense, therefore sinks because it's in the cold sector behind the cold front and then ahead of the cold of the cold front we have this air that is going up which is warm air as lab belt because it's in this warm sector warm warm air is less dense and therefore rises right to condense to form this heavy rainfall and then on the warm front there which is lab belt up here warm front we have the small clouds, the nimbus stratus clouds, which yield uh, legal rainfall, uh, and then the cold sector. That is how you are supposed to draw the cross section every time you are asked for this to get your full marks. And then down here we have the direction of movement of the multitude cyclone from west to east, which is eastward. So to get full marks, this is what you are expected to draw. And if it's a synoptic, this is what you draw. And so I have answered most of the questions. If anybody still has a problem with that, on the next video, I'm, to, I'm going to answer the checklist, checklist questions based on the paragraph questions. Don't forget to subscribe, tell a friend, like, comment, and... Uh, Peace. I'm out.